Hey guys, it's Hannah Sky here from Sweetener. So I'm just going to do a basically a tutorial on how to use Photoshop. Um, Photoshop can be quite a complicated thing until you get used to it. Um, a lot of it can be done by yourself, so self-taught. So I would suggest learning it as you go. Um, but I'm going to teach you basically everything I can possibly teach you all in one session. And then if you've got any questions, you can just pop them below or message me directly or on Discord and tell me what you need a little bit more help on. I am considering one-to-one -one or group tutorial sessions or teaching sessions, um, but that's just going to be on a first come first serve basis and it's going to see how I go first. But anyway, carrying on. So Photoshop, mine might, mine might look a bit different. I've just recently upgraded to the newest version as it's in the Black Friday sale. So if you haven't, I would highly recommend getting it. Um, but anyway, You've got a few buttons down the side and you've also got buttons at the top. So self-explanatory, you've got your file, your edit, image, layers, blah, 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 blah. Um, obviously file, new, open are your basic ones. So new and open are the basic the main ones you're going to use and also import video frame from layers. And that one is when you're using GIFs and you want to layer the GIFs out in individual frames. So just to be basic, click new and you come up with all your templates. These are just standard ones that Photoshop give you. Um, you can change them. Usually you'll find when you first start off with Photoshop, it will be in pixels or in, uh, inches. You wanna switch over to pixels. And again, you can make your own um, or you can literally just edit them and say 500 by 600 if that's your standard size. And then just click create and that will give you your basic image. Now you can also do it this way, so create new, and again do it the exactly same way. Now when you see, when I click new, you don't need to really worry about this bit here, so the resolution, mode, everything like that. Keep it basic, keep it as standard, um, as default, and you won't have any problems. So now you've got your image, um, you're going to wonder what buttons are. So I'm going to go through the buttons with you. So first one is basically your transform, or your select tool. And then if you right click on it, you've got an artboard tool. Don't really use it, so wouldn't bother with using it. This one is your selector tool. So like when you're doing boxes um, or a border, you can just select it. And then if you right click on it, you've got the other options. So a circle version, you've got a single row. So it'll just do a certain area and then column, it's that same thing. So it'll just do highlight a certain column. And then if you go back to the rectangle one, you've got these little three, four buttons up here. So this one just means basically a, a selection, just one. This one means multiple. So if I do that, then click on the second one, I can then draw two boxes and they merge together. This one is deselect. So if I wanted to remove some of this box, I can go like that and it will remove it. This one just completely deletes it basically. Well, it just cuts it down so the ones you want to think about is the first one which makes the box second one to add onto the box third one to remove and then when you want to go back to the original just click new selection and just click as simple as that you have got a box here that says feather so if you feather the edge ends um, if you want to make it a lot look rather than just solid you can have a feather edge so it's kind of blurred and you can just go up in segments if you want. So you can go from 0.1 to 0.5 and so forth. Style is basically just ratios. Don't really need to worry about that unless you want a specific size. Um, next one is the lasso tool. So you can draw around an image, for example. Um, so, and that's how you get it. So for example, and then you can just move it around. You can make a heart and that would be your heart. It's basically the same as this tool, um, your marquee tool, but it's just a lasso version, so you've got free roam. If you right click on that, you've got the polygonal, I can't pronounce today. Uh, it's just basic click, click. So you can click around areas. And then the magnetic one, if you've got like a picture, and I'll show you very shortly what I mean by this, it basically will drag and attach itself to lines it or to stuff it will see. Right, that's them ones. Then you've got, this one here is the quick selection tool. This is my favorite tool. 
if you're doing PNG cutouts or you want to delete a background, this is the best tool to use. Don't worry about the eraser, use this tool. And um, what you do is you basically, you've got the add, you've got nothing, add and minus. So when you go add, it will select an area, remove an area and obviously so forth. I will show you a bit more detail on that when I've got an image on the screen. This one's your crop tool. So if you want to crop an image down, self-explanatory, just click on it and then click crop or enter and it will crop it. Um, frame tool, I don't really bother using this. Um, basically it just puts a frame there and then you can mask an image on top. Don't use it, so don't use it. Uh, color picker, self-explanatory or eyedropper tool. If you've got a color, so yellow, you click on that color and it will give you that color in this box here. If you right click, it will do like as a hex code so you can copy the hex code or the html code and so forth let me just make that back to white <laughs> don't know where that yellow came from next on there you've got all these other ones it's up to you if you really want to use them i don't tend to use them just stick with the basics and trust me you can learn a lot um this one is your healing tool it's basically like a clone brush um i don't tend to use it uh, but play around with them, free for all. Then you've got your paintbrush. Might help actually add a colour you can see. So paintbrush and self-explanatory. When you right click, you've then got pencil brush. So harsher lines and colour replacement mixer brushes. Or you can mix two colours together or make them darker, lighter. Just stick with paintbrush. Um, that's probably the most common one. And then up here where you saw me click a moment ago is your brush presets. So you can choose your size, you can choose how hard or, so if you want it soft or hard, then that's how you can play around with it. Um, again, it's just playing around with it and see how you go. Um, this button here just gives you all your brushes that you've got installed. Um, and if you want to add brushes, easiest thing to do is go into this little spanner here or cog and then click import brushes and that's when you download your ABR files um, and that's how you import them and they'll just go to like the bottom of the list under a folder um, mode self-explanatory it just gives you the layer of what it's going to come out like so if you do it's overlay it's going to obviously become an overlay if you're going to lighten it, it's just going to make it lighter um, opacity self-explanatory if you want it faint or you want it dark that's how flow is pretty much the same um, just means how much comes out so the more the hot the lighter you press and then the harder you press um basically i don't use any of the other tools so that's that um clone brush it's only really good if you've got like an image with a watermark that's the best example for me to tell you so if you've got a watermark and you want to remove it you press you press alt on your keyboard and it makes this little target you press on it and then wherever you go it's going to copy that as you can see it looks like i'm in a raising but i'm not but it only works on that target and every now and again you will have to redo your target um because obviously it will then start covering your own image and it'll go black like that so that's what that's for and again you can change how big and small you want it and how hard and everything um history brush tool i don't use it play around with it <laughs> eraser self-explanatory just erases anything on your picture uh, again you can change the settings so size and hardness um, and everything else you've also got background tools to eraser can be quite handy so if you've got background you can highlight it and then it will delete the whole thing but sometimes it's just easier to use quick tool personally um, that's just my preference then you've got your paint bucket, which is quite self-explanatory. If you know paint, back in the day, you use your paint bucket and it paints the screen. Um, and then if you change over, right click, you've got your gradient tool, which you can change up here. And what's good with the new Photoshop is that you get gradients now built in. Um, so if you just click on one and then you drag the area, and it'll give you a gradient. So that's that one. I don't tend to use the others. I literally just use gradient tool and gradient bucket. This one is your smudge button. So if you want to smudge a color, um, that's how you do it. 
it literally just smudges. Um, very handy sometimes when you're doing manips and stuff. Um, where you want, like for example, like what I'm doing now, like a texture or some sort, then it's quite handy to do. You've also got blur and sharpen, so if you want to blur a bit out or you want to sharpen a bit out, then that's how else you can use it. This one is your burn tool, so if you want it darker or lighter, it just basically darkens things up. I don't tend to use a sponge, so don't use it. Pen tool, very handy if you want to do like the spirals or the light beams on um, certain edits. So you would literally click where you want it to go, click your next error, and then you drag to make the curve. So you can literally just do it as you want and just keep curving. So you, it's hard to explain, but when, so you click and then whilst you're clicking, that's when you drag to make the curve. Um, and like I say, you can go tight curve, long curve, short curve. Once you've got like an image in place, it is easier to work around that. And then in order for you to actually get that solidified onto your image, you then have to go to your paintbrush, choose your paintbrush size. I would always say for an edit, always go about eight or nine or smaller. Pick a color if you wanted to pick a color. Then you click back on the pen tool, right click, and then you want to click stroke path. And then you want to go brush, simulate pressure okay and that's how you get this glowy line then you have to remove this pen tool so you right click on it again and click delete path and that's how you get the curly lines i'm not worrying about the pen marks if you don't remove the pen marks they will stay and it does get frustrating because you're literally just like clicking all over the place so make sure you do it that way um you've got free form and other ones on there but just stick with the pen tool and learn around it the T self-explanatory is text. Um, so just your text settings. Um, if you don't know, then this is where all your fonts come in. I apologize, mine is a bit slow because I've got so many fonts. Um, and then your style, your font size, then your settings. I usually tend to go for the Windows versions just because they're a bit nicer, uh, but you can go the way that you like. And then if you want it left, middle, right, uh, the color, again, you can choose your color that way. I've also got one over here, but I'll explain that in a minute, how that works. And then just to get out of that, just click on your layout, on your layout and it's done. Um, path tool just basically selects whatever's there, but again, I don't use it. Um, rectangular tool. So if you want to, Make a rectangle. The easiest thing I would say for making rectangles and stuff is just use your marquee tool. Um, use your marquee tool, right click on it, then click either fill or stroke. Um, you won't do it because I'm on a text layer, but like this. So if you want to fill it, then you fill it the color you want um, or stroke it and whatever settings you like. And that's the easiest way for me to do a rectangle. Like, don't go for the half sort of doing it that way because that then gives you vectors and puts things on top of layers and layers and layers and it's just it's difficult for me so just stick with the um marquee this one the marquee tool and if you want to do a circle you can still do circles um obviously there's other custom shapes there if you want to use them this one is just basically your hand tool um i don't tend to use it basically if you well it doesn't want to work but <laughs> yeah and then your zoom tool um, the easiest thing to learn with the zoom tool is if you press your um, control and minus and control and plus that will zoom you in and out or you can use your wheel if you've got a um, mouse wheel down here it's just to edit your toolbar if you want things on there you don't want things on there this little arrow here just switches your colors around um, and then obviously color one color two and again buttons we don't use so what's next up the top so file new as we said open browsing bridge don't worry about it open as it's pretty much the same as open um close close all close to bridge save as self-explanatory so if you're going to save your picture save it as um the only time you really use export is if you're doing gifs and i tend to do them safe for web legacy um and i'll show that a bit later 
Um, other than that, I don't tend to use the others other than import, which I said was video frames to layers. Um, and that's when you use GIFs. Under edit, you've got your deselect, your undos, your fades, copy, paste, basically everything you'd normally find in edit. Um, what you want to play around with. Image is basically your mode. Don't worry about the modes. Try and leave them as RGB color, the standard. And then adjustments is just adjusting the layers or the picture. So your brightness, curves, blah. <laughs> you set who, saturation, black, white, everything else. Then you've got auto tone, auto contrast, auto color. Image sizes and canvas sizes. Always change image size rather than canvas size. Um, just out of knowledge. <laughs> so if you want to change the image size, click change image. Now, if this button is pressed like this, it will make it the same. So if I then made that 400, it's going to reduce it um, in proportion. If you deselect that and then press 400, the other image doesn't change or the other size doesn't change. You can make it out of proportion. Um, always make sure resamples on auto. Um, because canvas size just actually changes the canvas, not the actual image. I found anyway. Image rotation, self-explanatory. You want to flip it, flip it. Um, and you can also arbitrary, so you can choose what angle you want it at if you really want to do that. Um, under image, you also have your duplicate tool, which is quite handy. So if you want to duplicate a layer, you can do it that way. Or on another easy quick tool is just press Control and J and that will duplicate um, that layer. Uh, what else we got on here? Nothing else really matters. Under layer, uh, this is where it gets a bit more complicated. So you've got a new layer. Um, just remember that these shortcut, these little shortcuts. So Shift, Control and N makes a new layer. Um, which is helpful. Most things will give you a new layer anyway, but that's the easiest way to remember. Um, I don't tend to use these ones. Duplicate, as I said, Control and J is the easiest way to remember. Delete a layer. I don't know why they put it up there for. Because you can just go over to your layer and press delete. As easy as that. Um, as I said, I don't really tend to use much of these. So if you want to play around with them, please feel free. Um, type don't use select i don't use filters this is where you get your radial blurs and all your fancy filters so like a radial blur 100 percent. that's how you get your radial blur um and your motion blur and things like that that's how you use them um it's always where you get sharpens and other things on there as well 3d i don't use and the rest of them are just basically for properties and stuff Right, and then on this side, these are my own custom ones I've put in. I've removed quite a few of them, um, just for preference. Sorry, my throat's killing. Um, history, what have I done and what I haven't done. So I can go back um, to previous. Always handy to have if you do make an error, because then you can go, oh, I want to delete that one. Um, then it'll take it out. Properties, again, is just the properties, so that the text type and everything. This one is your brush settings. So like I say, when you've got all your brushes, this is where they'll show. This one is your just general brushes, what brushes I've added in or what ones I've got in the system. Uh, clone source, because sometimes, as I said, I do sometimes use it, not often. This one is your character type. So if I've got text and I want to do some writing let's say I make it white black but I want to space out the letters then this is where you do it so this one is your letter spacing and you don't have to just go to what it tells you you can add in another zero you can reduce it by whatever you want you don't have to use what is on here uh, this is just obviously your font size italic bold capitals tiny capitals uh, even smaller capitals <laughs> and all your others so underline and score this one here is your line height so if you're writing something underneath as you can see my writing overlaps so in order to get around that you highlight it all 
um, and you change your setting to say whatever is easier or what's more readable and there you go um, you can obviously change your font spelling it doesn't actually spell correct so just so you're aware uh, and again this bit here is just your how smooth you want the text basically to me that doesn't make much difference um, these buttons usually grayed out anyway P this little backwards P is paragraphs um, it's only really if you're making a lot of text it helps don't use 3d I don't know why I know I've got that there and then this one is my action tool where I do my sharpening brushes uh, sharpening actions and you literally just press on it and you press play and it will do everything for you um, in order to add one you have to click on the three two arrow oh, on the, the three lines and then click load actions and that is where you'll find your actions um, once you've downloaded them and once they come in they'll come on to like this a file and then it'll be under there and it will show you everything that's on that um, so that's that um, the other thing that I will recommend that you put in if you go to window uh, I think it's on window yes so under workspace you want motion because this will give you the timeline here which was what you'll use later on for gifs and things like that so now that we've got the self-explanatory how do we add in a photo so you click file you click open you want to find your photo so I'm just gonna whack in a picture of Avril as usual now that you've opened that image how do we get onto this page you're gonna drag the tab and then you're just gonna drag her across and then you can just close that and then as you can see I can just move her around using my click tool um, and as you can see I'm getting these pink lines what do these pink lines mean this is my ruler proportion so it'll tell me where the edges meet up and um, where they snap to and um, what they're aligned with basically in order to change the size and scale you want to press ctrl and T which is transform and you'll get this grid up and then you can literally scale it down and drag and enlarge and rotate you can do everything you basically need um, be warned though that once you've made it a size and press enter and then change it again the likelihood that image is going to be blurry so just bear that in mind <laughs> obviously you can decrease again without too much but if you're going small to big then you're going to have a bit of a downgrading quality so as you can see i'm literally i can now place her wherever i want to um and as you can see it will still snap to um my edges so that's how you add a photo um exactly the same with a psd so if you've got a psd that you want to add on um you can add it on it's not a problem so um just grab a random PSD I guess um, and with the PSD is that the same so you drag the tab out and you see this little folder here which is called a group you literally just drag and drop that group onto the image and then you can close that click no because you don't want to save it all you've done is just tampered around with the folder to drag it over basically and that's your your PSD and the little like I just means if it's visible or not visible when you open that folder you can then go through the visible eyes and if you want to remove a layer you can remove a layer um, if you don't want to remove a layer you don't have to remove a layer it's your decision whatever you think works for the edit essentially um, and again you're just going down here if you then want to flatten that image um, so it's one you just click flatten image and discard all the hidden layers so anything you haven't put an eye on it will delete if you don't want to remove them eyes then you just click merge visible and you'll get the layers that you did delete or that you've removed but not deleted still here so you can re-add them back on if you should you wish to or you can just delete them as I said you can do mm, other stuff from this side so you can duplicate from here you can do all sorts um, you can blend your options 
you can merge up down create masks everything um you can also do new layer from here so you press that one oh wrong button that's showing you the layers you can do a new layer from here and i've completely forgotten that one that one there and that will give you a new layer this one's your group tool so as you saw in the psd that's how you make a group and um, you just click on it and then in order to put anything inside of a group you just drag it into the box and it will then go like this um this one down here is obviously basically everything that's in your image tool um your edit so if you want to make it brighter or darker um that's how you do it and if you watch my other tutorial that's how you make psds as well your color ins oh and then your master tool and your special effects special effects is good for text it text so if you're writing text again you want to highlight that all you want to right click on it or you can press the fx button and it will give you options so if you just go blending options it'll bring up this box which is your layer style and then you've got your drop shadow you've got your outer glow you've got patterns you've got gradients everything you can possibly think of and um, that you might need and again you can just play around with them um there's no wrong or right way of the settings um some people use strokes overlays gradients drop out glow you name everything um what works for your edit you choose and i'm just going to delete that delete contents and group i uh, will also delete that as well now what else should i show you right so we're going to import a gif i'm trying to think if i've got any gifs on my thing yeah i do so you want to go import video from frames this might take a while um so bear with me You then want to find your p your gifs sorry and once you get to your gifs i think i might have a gif in here um jpeg 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 oh here we go gifs you then want to select on the gif that you want click open oh that's helpful it's not what i wanted to show you have i got any other No, nope, it's not going to work for me. Okay, so you can do it the normal way if it comes down to that. Um, you can open a GIF this way and it will still open up the layers that you need, but the import does work better. And then you get all these layers here. Um, and then to select all the layers, you want to press your shift button and you want to make sure that your bottom one's selected. And then you just press shift and click the top one. That will give you all of them and then if you want to press your group button that then puts it all in one folder so you know where everything is and then again exactly like your psd and your image <clears throat> all you want to do this time however is drag the group over like so and then you can close that down no i don't want to save it and there's your your essentially i've just moved that the wrong way um your gif exactly same applies you can transform it you can crop it you can lighten it you can do whatever you need to do so if i pop that there and then click lighten it will just go in the background um if i click overlay you can't really see it but you get the gist there's all different types of settings on the side that you can use um and if you want to like make it a different shape you can mask it so you make the shape that you want to do probably even smaller to be honest and then you click your mask button and it will delete everything around it um and you can do that several times if you need to so if you then want to cut a bit out again you can then click back on that and mask that as well nope it's not gonna work um but you can do it that way or you can use your eraser tool and erase that section out so she's then got a cut out of it can we show you that okay there you go and in order to get that into a gif you then want to go into this timeline that i told you about and you don't want timeline you want to go create a frame animation and then you want to go to these little lines here 
and it's not going to do it is it click on the frame animation there we go then you want to go this button and then you want to click make frame from layers make sure you press that one because that will give you all the layers of that gif delete the first one never need the first one and then what you want to do exactly like i told you before make sure the first one's clicked and then press your shift and the last button and then press your background image now you'll see that the background image is on all of them if you press your play button now the gif will play out and it will just keep playing until you press stop you normally it might set to once three times forever if you're making gifs i suggest just keep them for, at forever um, you see there's also zero seconds at the bottom if you press shift and all of them again you can change the delay or you can modify the delay to your preference so how slow how fast you want it just be aware that what it might seem in front of you is not necessarily what it is online um, it may be faster so play with your time of time play around with it until you find the right kind of settings again to stop that just press stop because you can't do nothing else while it's running that's how you make a gif and you can always just minimize that until you want to go back to it um, and click back on it oh I just pressed the video one I don't use video fun so that is how I tend to make my gifs essentially um, I just realized why my import didn't work so imports actually for videos so I didn't realize it says video frames to layers so that's if you want to make your own custom gifs um, I'm trying to think if I have any decent videos that I can show you oh, okay I can just show you that one for example so import video frames if you've already downloaded a video say from YouTube or something and you want to make it into GIFs then this is how you do it um, this is my own fan videos you probably seen. so what I've just done is I've clicked import and then clicked on the video then you get this frame I would suggest clicking like limit to every and then making it like 15 or something unless it's a big one and then you've got this play tool which basically plays out the clip um, and you can click you can watch it um, watch it with the sound so you know where you want a certain clip so some of this didn't render I believe and then these bars here is what your cut off are so if you wanted like this little fragment I don't know if that's even a good part let's just back it to that one and then click OK it will just make GIFs out of that certain part and because I didn't choose a lot of layers it's only done a few but that's how, essentially how you do a GIF um, or import a video to make a gift a GIF um, don't think there's really much else to show you um, as I say, everything is really just play around and just see how you get on with things and use the resources that are around that are available, especially free resources. So you can get a proper build on what you're doing and how to work Photoshop. So like I say, if you have got any questions, please do let me know. But I hope this tutorial has made a bit of sense at least. And if you have any problems or trial and error, basically, um, I'd like to know like I'm here to help so if you've got if you're stuck anywhere then just shout and I'll be here um one last thing before I realize is my templates that people don't know how to use so if you go to my templates and you want to use one of my templates but don't know how to use it you open up the template as so and then you've got all the layers you literally delete the layer you do not want and you can modify the layers you don't want um, you can play around with it it's not a difficult thing um, that is how PSD tends to work so it just layers everything and you can add layers remove layers basically how a PSD colouring works that was the last thing I wanted to show you so I hope this has helped and if it hasn't let me know why and I will see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching.